Yeah, baby. Oh, my God. On this episode of Cooligans, we talk to Ramses Sandoval. From through the end, we talk about uh, his history in broadcasting. That's uh, right. The future, the MLS Cup final that he will be calling very, very soon. And some of the most boring games he's had to sit through. <laughs> that and more on this episode of the Cooligans. <laughs> Yeah, baby! Yes, we are here. We are back. Nice on a Thursday. You got to love it. do. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, the, the uh, MLS playoff matches have uh, happened already. Right, which we totally know about because we don't <laughs> record this a few days in advance. Uh, so no. we're just as surprised as you. <laughs> Crazy that that happened. Yeah. Uh, but no, we are excited to uh, be joined uh, by our, our next guest who is uh, very much involved, not only in, uh, in, in Liga MX, but also in, in been around MLS a long time. Absolutely. A, as a real uh connection real history with uh with the league and and has been a part of its growth without Absolutely. a doubt uh so please introduce our guest alexis well guys you know him you love him he's one of the hosts of two the N. he's all over the place bilingual broadcaster so you know we had to bring him on a cooligans okay put your hands together unless you drive for the one the only ramses sandoval let's go hello <laughs> i'm so i can i just apologize for alexis before we even start you may, you may. No, no. Listen, uh, it's it's a pleasure to be with you guys, uh, Chris, Alex. Um, fat fan of the show. Fan of what you guys do. Um, you guys put your sauce on uh, on the game. It's fun, uh, easy to sit through, if you will, compared to uh, other shows. And uh, it's a blast to be with you guys. Chit chat it up. Um, MLS Liga Max, whatever you guys uh, want to chat about. Obviously, with with the MLS Cup upon us, and with what's been an unbelievable season of Major League Soccer with El Tráfico. Um, what a rivalry. I was saying it this week. Uh, I think we finally found a classical, a real derby in Major League Soccer. No disrespect to anybody else, but this is a real classical. What we saw days ago at Bank of California, that is a classical. That is a rivalry. And it's exciting because, you know, this is our soccer. It's Major League Soccer. Yeah, that's right. I'm shocked that you're not as amazed and, and uh, intoxicated by <laughs> Columbus Crew versus Cincinnati FC. <laughs> you know what? On this show please let's disrespect other <laughs> other darbies don't worry yeah, about it. yeah no <laughs> if anyone is gonna do it it's us baby <laughs> so my first question to you uh, because uh, especially when i started uh focusing on mls and watching mls a lot more uh you were about two weeks ago two weeks ago two or three uh yes <laughs> <laughs> the, the history that nycfc has is incredible yeah. been around so long uh but no you are one of those uh just voices that i was uh, associated with uh with the league right and what how was um, sort of your introduction to MLS and you starting to cover the league and, and what did that sort of mean to you to cover this league, especially probably coming from Liga MX and, and trying to speak to a different audience? Well, uh, well, listen, I, I grew up in Southern California, um, so and I grew up from Mexican parents. My parents are from Guadalajara. I was born here, obviously, in the United States in in. Uh, in Cali, in LA, and growing up, it was that classic uh, identity crisis. You know, you had the great US teams with Donovan and company, but then you had Mexico that you grew up with and you just did, especially at the beginning of the 2000s, because that's what your parents watched. That's what the Sunday league was about. You used to play against teams that had the Chivas uniform, the America uniform, and let's face it, 2000, Major League Soccer was very, very young and not a lot of people believed in it. And not a lot of people believed it, it would be where it is today. Same thing with the US national team. That's why when that era of Team USA whooping on Mexico again and again and the Dos Acero and all that good stuff. Um, it was kind of, you know, the beginning of an era. And, um, you know, for me, being caught in the middle, it was fun to mess with with my friends, my buddies that are till today very pro-Mexico um, because that's what they grew up on. They was, they're they born in the United States, but it's, it's that classic um, dynamic that is it, – it, you only really live with these two national teams. If you're born in Brazil, you're going to go for Brazil, born in Argentina, France, etc. But with with uh, the situation with football, soccer, the U.S. and Mexico, it's different till the day. For me, it, it has developed through the years. Um, ever since I started covering MLS and the U.S. national team, um, starting to call the U.S. national team games now. But you know, 
I covered them for five, six years, you know, on every trip, on every World Cup qualifier, and you build relationships, and you see the guys, and you deal with them, um, and you kind of just uh, start realizing that there's a real connection there as well for me. So if I was spoken about an identity crisis, which which a lot of us, I think, have, um, now in my 30s, I think I, I caught that era, that era of the 2000s and the 2005, 2010, and now again, Mexico's on top. Um, but listen, I, I, I grew up in Cali. I started doing the Chivas USA games in 2010 on the radio. It was kind of a, of a crazy story, the way I got my, uh, my voice out, if you will. I went out on, uh, on, on Twitter. I went out on social media. I carried discs around all over downtown LA, handed them, ma- handed wow. them out at every like network you could think tapes. of. I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was, uh, I was doing basically what Eminem was doing in Detroit. Yeah. No, but listen, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I try to get out there as best I could. And, you know, I, I got an opportunity. I started on the radio. I transitioned very quickly into TV, started doing games in Spanish. Um, and, you know, not to bore you guys, little by little by little, uh, all of a sudden, Univision Deportes Tudén uh, caught one of the matches that I started doing, which was Liga MX in English. And one of the first networks to do was El Rey Network, actually at, under that umbrella of, um, uh, of Univision, of, of, of what is Univision and, and now Tudén. And Robert Rodriguez at the helm of that. Yeah, of yeah, that yeah. Network. yeah famous bizarre. director. Yeah. I, I, I had a meeting with him. I had a meeting with him in Santa Monica. I sat down with him and he said, listen, I, can you do soccer in English? I said, absolutely. He said, I don't want you to scream. It's in the back of the net and he <laughs> scores. And that's a wonderful <laughs> finish. Yeah. And he tells me, he tells me, can you scream goal? And I said, can I scream goal? Yeah, I can do that. And he's like, that's what I want. So I, you know, I, I built that, uh, that rapport and I built that, that style. Which, you know, to begin with, I always wanted to do that. When I was younger, I said, why don't the English play-by-play guys, you know, why don't they yell the goal call? I get it in England, you know, it's it's the British accent and it sounds cool and what, no. But for, <laughs> for you know, American broadcasters, I was like, why don't they yell goal? You know, it'd be, it'd be really cool to see. So I started doing it. It's stuck. It's something that I do till today. Love it or hate it. And you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's that's how they heard me. And, you know, I joined... Uh, I joined Univision um, for the beginning of that historic deal. And I say historic because, you know, MLS matches were exclusively on Unimas and, and TUDN. Uh, yeah, they were in Spanish. You had to click on the SAP. But at the end of the day, if, if you if you wanted to listen to that game in English, um, in American League, it was on a Spanish network. So that that was historic. And I, I joined in. In 2015, I've been calling all the games since the start of, of that deal. And I was with Paul Caligiuri. I was with Keith Costigan, Nico Cantor, Marcelo Balboa. So um, you know, I'm glad that I stuck there. So, and, and then from there, obviously, guys transitioned into getting great opportunities in Spanish. And, and you know, just, just been building up since then. It's, it's a tough industry. It's very competitive. Um, you know, you, you have to pay your dues. And and the word that comes to mind is, is, is grind. And, and it's something that I can tell you guys. For years and years, you have to do nothing comes, you know, they, they, they don't just come to you and say, hey, you're going to be on the boot to call a U.S. national game in, in a gold cup. It, 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 at least but for it's, me, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And, it's very and different from too. our uh, come up because Fubo just was like, saw us day one. And they're like, you guys got something. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, we got more when we come back. Hold on. <laughs> Hi, I'm Yael Averbush. Hi, I'm Gloria Averbush. And, and we, we got, got Gully, Gully with, with the Cooligans. All right, welcome back. We are here with Ramses Sandoval from Atudn. Uh, I have to, I have, Ramses, I have to ask you this question because this showed up on your Wikipedia page, and I'm sure you've been asked this several times. But this this took us a took us aback. A yeah, we bit. were we were uh, surprised. <laughs> we were a little surprised. But there's an entry here in your Wikipedia entry that says uh, Ramses Sandoval is known for being the cousin of Canadian rock musician Chad Kroger of Nickelback. <laughs> Please Have we been this. mispronouncing <laughs> Chad Kroger? <laughs> what is this? Is this real? Hey, you guys are hilarious because I noticed that, and I think it's funny. He is not my cousin. Okay, I have no <laughs> we can confirm. Yes, confirmed it. You heard it here first. You were not at the <laughs> wedding with him and Avril Lavigne. <laughs> we were all wondering, was the cake black? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> did you guys really think that that was true? You probably did. We were so it's confused. <laughs> Wikipedia's <laughs> never been wrong. Yeah. So why wouldn't it? Be? You know, I think Chad Kroger is a huge fan of yours and edited your Wikipedia page <laughs> to say that. It's like, I want to be related to that. Yeah, oh, I like the way he yells gold in English. <laughs> <laughs> that is well I don't know right. who did that, but that's hilarious. This is, Somebody's messing with you, man. <laughs> this is amazing. All Which right. Which goes to show how we do our research on Wikipedia. Uh, awesome. Ramses, Good preparation. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I that I want to ask is you've you've called a lot of games. You've called a lot of uh US men's and matches. You called, I believe, the game versus Cuba, correct? Yeah, yeah. When you when you go through that, right? Do you? Because I'm I'm Cuban myself, uh, and I I had to sit through that. I was in D.C. Uh, were you? What do you? How do you prepare for something like that? Like, do you have to come up with a lot of personal stories? What what kind of when when seven goals are scored in the first 17 seconds? What what do you do for the next 89 minutes? Listen, for me, the preparation. Um, uh, and not to run around your question, the preparation has to be the same. You know, you have to do your research on every player. Every every play by play has a different style. Um, if you guys heard my play by play, both English and Spanish, I like to go into the background where they're from, what barrio they're from, what little town they're from, if they're from Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, whatever it is, their age, former teams, um, you know, little interesting details of, of, of each player or stories per player. For, in that game specifically, I know exactly what you're talking about because 12 minutes in, it was 4-0, and I remember saying on the broadcast, this could be like 16-0, 18-0 by the end of the game, I and mean, we're averaging a goal every four minutes, something like that, and of course, all that changed. Um, and I got into a, 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 an argument on, on on the call with with one of the with one of our broadcasters because you know say so maybe the U.S. needs to pump the brakes here, um, and a couple of the guys were like, no, no mercy, you know, 15, 16, 17, you know, show no mercy. Mexico isn't going to show any mercy. I believe they were playing uh, Bermuda or another uh, weaker national team, if you will, as part of the Nations League. Um, but it's the same preparation. I mean, listen, in in that game at least, I can tell you that that I had a uh, I had um. Another play-by-play, -play, I had two analysts, and then I had a, a field reporter. So that is a lot better than, you know, doing a, a Nations League game in the Caribbean by yourself. That, when you are 90 minutes calling, and again, no disrespect, I'm not I'm not going to na name any, <laughs> any national teams, but you got to have your laptop on. You got to have, you know, pages up. You got to know where these guys are from. A lot of these players, I'm telling you guys, a lot of these players, you can't find anything about them. They play for amateur teams. Um, you got you really don't have anything to work off, so you have to throw stats at the tournament. Um, you know how they got to you know League A, League B, League C. What's going on in their groups? Are you that like the uh, the goalkeeper of Gua, Nelson Johnston, is cousins with Chad Kroger? <laughs> I see here on my computer. <laughs> oh my goodness! So the uh, I had another uh, maybe a bigger question for you because yeah, especially for someone who's been around American soccer and Mexican soccer for a long time, the a lot of the complaints about oh not even complaints but the the reality of you know uh, the ratings for like MLS games compared. to to Liga MX and we see that uh, you know uh, MLS is definitely trying to merge uh, uh, not not merge, merge the league but like have a stronger connection with Liga MX with the no they're actually trying to merge the league yeah with yeah. that too but they're little also little, trying to merge the league they'll, they'll, get, they'll get us there eventually um, but the the Campeones Cup and and, and the League's Cup and uh, there seems to be this real uh, both countries sort of want something from the other they want the uh, MLS wants more uh, uh, they want the the the, the fan uh sort of you know the excitement from of Liga, Liga MX they want that in MLS and and Liga MX wants more American fans but how and they want to get rid of promotion and relegation <laughs> but how do you feel about the way MLS is delivered to fans and how, how do you think it, we can improve it to get more people to watch and be more interested in the league well, listen, Major League Soccer has had a, a tremendous growth, and, and I'm the number one fan of it because, you know, I, I cover it, and, and I have love for it because of what you mentioned earlier. I've been around it going on 10 years now, um, very young, through the tough starts, you know, through the rough starts. Now you look at teams like LAFC, Atlanta United, you know, 70,000 fans, um, Portland Stadium getting G'd up, and, you know, those Clásicos and the Derbies, and CenturyLink Field looking amazing for a soccer match. And it's exciting, you know, you you you, you feel proud uh, in a way. But Liga MX is a monster, and the Mexican League has been a monster for a long time. I'm a Mexican-American kid. I, I 
it's not about defending uh, the, the Mexican League, but I get into a lot of healthy arguments, if you will, um, with, with, with fans and analysts when they like to say, oh, well, you know, Liverpool and Tottenham and Arsenal, Chelsea on a Sunday. Listen, and this has been proven, and you guys have looked at ratings on any given day. A Gallos Blancos of Querétaro against Cholos of Tijuana on a Saturday night is going to beat the ratings of a Tottenham, of a La Liga, you know, unless it's Barcelona Real, of a, any attractive match from Europe. And that is the bottom line because of the population in the United States that wants to see their Mexican soccer. And it's not just Chivas, and it's just not America that are monsters, Cruz Azul as well, that, you know, you get 900,000 viewers on a Cruz Azul Puebla or like, you know, a, a Cholos against Morelia. Forget about a Chivas America, Cruz Azul Pumas, Monterrey Tigres, now two major teams that people want to see. So MLS is doing the correct thing. They're bringing very important players into the league. It's becoming more attractive. Atlanta United is a sexy team. LAFC is a sexy team. Seattle is a sexy team. The Galaxy and Slatan and everything they bring is sexy for Major League Soccer. And that's what they need to do. We need more press conferences like Slatan Ibrahimovic. We need more reactions like Bob Bradley. You know, compared to the NFL, to the NBA, to baseball. So those storylines, we get them all the time in Liga MX. Eight, nine managers have been fired in a short tournament for Liga MX. You know what I mean? It's it's bizarre, but that's what builds stories. The controversy, not only in the pitch, but off of it as well, with VAR being introduced as well. But at the end of the day, when, when you're trying to tie both leagues in, and I hear a lot of colleagues and a lot of people thrash Leagues Cup and thrash the Campeones Cup, listen, it sells. And when you look at a stadium in Houston or wherever it is, or in L.A., packed is because it sells. And, and we live in an era of social media and money. Money is money, and the leagues are doing that. And listen, maybe this time around it wasn't the best, uh, how do I say, preparation. I wanted to see the Galaxy stacked in those matches. Yeah, and we yeah. also saw the Skeloto did not, did not play any any of his important players. And just like that, they got through Cholos in that first game. But maybe for years to come, the commissioner or, or perhaps uh, – there could be something made of let's make a deal. You got to play at least 70% of your A team in these type of games. And we know that Leagues Cup's going to go to eight teams and then it's going to go to 16 teams. I mean, it's going to be a 32 yeah. team elimination tournament in a couple of years. And I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it's going to be fun. You get Atlanta Tigres, Monterrey against LAFC, Seattle, Cruz Azul. Those are the matches I want to see, but with both teams playing their best players. Exactly. Escalota was like, uh, I'm going to save my best players to give up five goals in the playoffs. Yeah. That was his mentality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more Ramses after this. <laughs> We are back here with Ramses Sandoval. Uh, okay, so in the last time you did mention uh, the Bob Bradley uh, little incident with Sebastian Salazar, and I'm curious. Get lost. <laughs> I'm curious how. What did you think about that? And how would you handle? It? I've seen you uh, do interviews. Everybody's usually very, very polite to you, uh, uh, but it seems kind of ridiculous from Bob Bradley, right? It seems like he went a little too far. Listen, I. I... This is a tough one because because Sebi's a colleague and, and I'm never and Bob Bradley's in the industry. So the way I'll answer this is um, for, for me in a post interview, I, I probably would have asked something else because of what I just saw. You just beat a team you hadn't beaten in a couple of years. You beat them in your stadium, which had an electric atmosphere. Carlos Vela busted a Rabona at one point. You were having a party. You were absolutely electric offensively, and you thrashed your rival in the game that mattered. Um, I understand both points. I respect Sebi a whole lot for going after that question, and we've seen him do this before. He's one of the best doing him, you know, one of the best doing these type of interviews and going after, uh, after that quote that you need, after that story that you yeah, need. Yeah. But listen, if you get in Bob's shoes as well, I mean, you, you, you know, you just – you just lived 90 minutes of adrenaline you got through and the MVP of the league who just broke a record that we didn't think would be broken in years to come, Jose Martinez, and the team just broke a record that we didn't think could be broken in years to come, Red Bulls. And then he scores a brace in that game and he busts a Rabona and he is locked in against Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I see both points, so I'm, I'm going to keep it in there because I don't yeah, want yeah. to get into any, you know, any any 
Ah, you know, any I'll keep it in the gray area, guys. No, that's all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that. I like those kinds of questions, but I also thought there was a chance where Bob could have been like, "Yeah, they say he couldn't do it in big games." I mean, look, he did it here. But I do like the to your point, Ram says the the whole uh, get lost. That adds. That's a clip that makes it on every major sports yeah. network all across the country, possibly the world. So it, we need more of that. You know, I want a coach to punch Sebi in the face. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. Let's get some clips. Yeah, Sub charges. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I agree with you. And and I, I actually spoke about this last night. We're, we're doing contact deportivo with the colleagues down down at Tudén. I was telling me, Bob could have certainly answered that question differently. Exactly. I said exactly what you said. Yeah, they've had said that in the past, but I don't think that happened today. But also, you take into consideration Bob Bradley's character. We all know Bob. He's from you know, Jersey. And, and we know his maniac. style. And <laughs> And, and we know how he's going to handle that question. If you ask that to Tata Martino, which I did last year a couple of times when there were some players, I won't mention any names that didn't react, he's going to be different about it. I mean, listen, I'll tell you a story, and, and, and you may have seen this. Last last year covering the, the championship in Atlanta, I went after Tata, and of course, everybody wanted to know, Tata, when are you joining the Mexican national team? It's a secret, but when are you going to join them? What's going on? And he, he grabbed me in the cheek. <laughs> and he said, look at that eagle. Look at that eagle. I mean, that's how he answered. You know what I mean? And I, I remember on camera, he's like, hey, good try, buddy, type of thing. You know, like, it, everybody is different. Every coach is going to react different. That was surprising from Tata Martino. But, you know, maybe if you ask a coach that's a little bit more, you know, yeah, a different style, different characteristic, he, he may answer that very differently. That, that could have been a, a bad answer for me, too. Like, hey, Ramses. Come on. Yeah. I just want a title here with Atlanta United. Respect Atlanta, blah, blah, blah. So that was a reach by my part there, but it's just an example to let you guys know that every manager is going to react. I, I love it because uh, I didn't know Tata was the godfather. Yeah. Just, uh, top it. <laughs> hey. Someone from a Barra Brava is going to come kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you no. dare disrespect me like that after an Atlanta match. <laughs> I have a question because you have this sort of knack where you you are able to sort of go into like, um, you know, like the Mexican sort of mindset and, and understand the fans base really well and also you really understand MLS and there's not many people that I think uh, find that same balance so when something like Campeones Cup happens and Atlanta beats um, Club America uh, if I'm not mistaken yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what how is that I know how we perceived it here we were jumping up and down we were going nuts how is that perceived in in like amongst the Liga MX fan base and the front offices well, listen, they, they don't like it. They, there's a big rivalry here, even though people want to talk these tournament downs and these game downs and the rivalry uh, down, if you will. I'll give you an example. These games that were going on, and not only these games, you know, at the national team level, um, you go into the offices of Tudena, you know, you got, you got the editors, the producers, you got the talent, and obviously you got a lot, a lot of strong ties to Mexican football talent. And then you got some people that, you know, the, 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 the they have the American side of it, you know, like myself, um, like Marcelo Balboa, like Ivan Casanceo, who you guys may see here and again covering the U.S. as well, like Nico Cantor sometimes. Um, and, you know, and we were we were having a blast. And of course, you got that big TV right in front where, you know, you watch the big games and you're celebrating these goals from 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 Atlanta United or Major League Soccer sides over Mexican over Mexican clubs. Same thing happened when Toronto got to the championship and, and the CONCACAF mm -hmm. Champions League. They end up losing against Chivas of Guadalajara. So I, I think they see the beginning of a rivalry that is brewing up sooner than they thought. Again, 2000, 2005, I don't know that, that Cruz Azul, America, Chivas are losing any of these games against the teams back then, even a very strong Galaxy team or a championship Houston Dynamo team in that era or, or whatever it may be, or those revolution teams that lost again and again in, in, in MLS Cups. But today, I mean, you, you, I can make the argument for LAFC, Seattle, Atlanta. I mean, these are strong teams. Yeah, they may have to be a little bit better tactically. You may have to plug in some players defensively. But listen, some big-time names have chosen MLS to Liga MX. There was a time where La Volpe wanted Diego Valeri for America, and Diego Valeri told me, no, I, I was comfortable in Portland. Almiron was an option at one point. Joseph Martinez. It, Carlos Vela, who's playing in, in, in MLS. So I tell people again and again, when, when you have – superstar players in their prime choosing major league soccer over the MX. it's a matter of time yeah you still have very stacked squats like monterrey tigres i mean 90 96 million dollar budget teams the, the 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 most expensive teams if you will you look at monterrey's pension you're like what 
look at Tigres bench and you look at and Valencia, the number one at striker position for Ecuador or Celarayan, who, you know, they could sell for nine, 10 million. They've rejected 10, 11 million dollar bids in Argentina and he's on the bench for Tuca Ferretti. And then you say, oh, well, you know, I don't know that MLS teams have that. Those players are always going to start. Those players are always going to be in the starting line of their, their DPs or whatnot. But listen, it's something that, that Liga Max is concerned about. But I think it, 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 it makes competition better. And again, with no disrespect to anybody in the area of CONCACAF, it's competition that has never existed. Anybody who says a CONCACAF Champions League hasn't gotten more exciting ever since MLS have stepped their game up, would be lying because yeah, yeah. you don't get the same competition from other clubs in other areas. It really is MLS, the only league who at one point, and maybe you know, a team from Costa Rica or from Honduras, you know, they, they, they get a good thing going. Maybe they, they can get into the final four or whatnot. But to me, it's Liga MX, and then after that, Major League Soccer. And 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 for a long time, the Mexican Premiership has absolutely owned the the, the CONCACAF club level. It's only a matter of time, guys. Yeah, it's happening, baby. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back after this. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So, uh, Ramses, I wanted to ask, a, but you were mentioning about uh, big-name players coming to Major League Soccer, but we should talk about big-name coaches coming from Mexico uh, to coach in Major League Soccer, which has been incredible. We saw Pelado Almeida this uh, season. Even though they didn't make it to the playoffs, it was uh, a, a monumental signing. One of it the was biggest... like eight weeks of excitement there, baby. <laughs> you we, know? Were, we were into it. What? Uh, the, uh, I, I guess the question is, how do you feel about him coming to Major League Soccer and also all the rumors that he was going to leave immediately after they had missed out on the playoffs? What is him? What what does more, so, uh, I guess, coaches that coached in Liga MX uh, coaching here, what do you think we can learn from them? What do you think them coming here uh, means for this league? Well, Matias Almeida was a huge win for Major League Soccer. And I think whoever says that they weren't surprised when San Jose Earthquakes broke Twitter or at least the American soccer fan base yeah. Twitter there for a couple of San minutes. San Jose Earthquakes, Kim Kardashian, battle. same thing. We all know yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> listen, or, or, or uh, Jennifer Aniston on Instagram. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Listen, guys, um, it, it was huge because a lot of people were linking it with the Costa Rican national team, with the Mexican national team, with Argentina, with Luis Celeste. That didn't pan out. And, of course, big teams were interested in him in Liga MX. As, as past as Cruz Azul at that point, as recent as Monterrey after Alonso was let go. Of course, Turco Mohamed took them over. But going back to that point, and I think that's what you were touching on, um, you know, he, he loses out. Everybody, you know, we, we cover this story closely, and, and, and they picked my brain, and I went on shows and said, even if they do not beat Portland and they are eliminated from the playoffs, I don't think Almeida is going to leave. I spoke to him. He's very comfortable. He, he likes what's going on in San Jose. What he has been able to do with his – program from you know see, seasons past and Jackson Ewell and Tommy Thompson and the season uh, uh, Wondolowski had and the players that he's believed in and brought on and probably what he's going to look to bring on don't be surprised if a couple of Chivas or Guadalajara players arrive in, in MLS that don't come you know into plan where Ricardo Pala is taking over Chivas and those guys may include Chofis Lopez, Brizuela, I don't know these could be big time guys that yeah. loved uh, the, the playing time with Almeida may join Almeida, but that was huge. Just how Carlos Vela joined in LAFC, just how Gio originally with a very good first season joined Galaxy was a win for MLS. Just how Almeida was a win for, for MLS and keeping some of these guys. Um, and, and, and you've seen now an, another win for MLS is when you see guys go from MLS to Liga MX, like Romario Ibarra, who's now with Pachuca, like Jorge Villafaña at one point, one of two guys to win both Liga MX and MLS championships, and the other guy, of course, Omar Gonzalez, who did it as well. That's huge because in the past it was like, yeah, we don't need MLS guys. We're Liga Max. You know, mm -hmm. we go down and we get Brazilians and Argentinians and Colombians and, and you know, you name it. And they have to come from those prime leagues, you know, Argentina, Brazil, you name it, Uruguay, Chile. Uh, but nowadays, these are all big wins for, for Major League Soccer, including Almeida. And and, and, and Almeida particularly because, you know, he, he was sought after – I don't want to utilize the three-letter word that we all know about, but like a king, 
down there. In Guadalajara, they still scream for him. Monterrey, I, I do think Monterrey did make an offer for him. There was a lot of talk. I can't confirm this, but but a million, couple million dollar clause if they wanted him. San Jose covered themselves well, knowing that if he was going to sign a contract, look, Matias, you sign a contract, that's great, but we know you're popular, and at any moment, Liga Mex is so crazy, big-time team loses a coach, Tigres, Monterrey, Cruz Azul, you name it. In this case, Rayados, they're going to come after you. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, that was a good job by, by San Jose to cover themselves, and they have a bright future, especially if they let, you know, Almeida, you know, go into that transfer market and 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 uh, go after a couple of players. You saw the stadium as well. It's it's crazy. Think about a coach that can do that. Usually, a player sure. will, will bring uh, you know <laughs> fans into into say. But Avaya at one point going crazy, of course, because all the Chivas hermanos are absolutely in love with El Pelado Almeida. It's it's amazing. It feels like we're at we're at a time now where there's like DP coaches, which we've said on the show before. But what do you think are some of the things that? Um, that I think I mean, it seems a lot like some of the players you've mentioned, Valeri and some of the other players, they want to come to the U.S. because it's a bit more of a relaxed atmosphere, a little less uh, pressure from the media, a little less pressure from the fans, for sure. What are some of the things that you think may start to change in MLS as it becomes bigger? Well, I, th I think it's just going to be a bunch of good things because we already see players that want to come for several factors. I mean, one that jumps at me is security. I mean, um, you know, Diego, Diego Valeri used to tell me, listen, Ramses, I'm, I'm in Portland. Man, I wake up and listen to the sound of the birds and I can go to Starbucks and have a coffee and not have a fan yelling at me. Hey, Diego Valeri, you missed a penalty kick last night. You know, you can go to, you know what? Same thing with Carlos Vela. I mean, Carritos Vela probably gets up in beautiful La La Land, go gets mocha relaxes <laughs> with his family and he doesn't got a guy yelling at him yeah, yeah. like he probably would in another country. Yo, what the heck? You know, you score like two goals, but you miss three because that is the type of pressure. It sounds crazy. You score two goals, but you miss three. You need to be scoring. <laughs> yeah. They want unrealistic, unrealistic numbers. And, and I think in Portland, in Portland, they're just they like, just, hey, man, good job out there. Yeah. I really, I'm proud of you, man. Have a, have a weed cookie, dude. <laughs> you did your best. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, man. But that was a great zero zero scoreline, <laughs> yeah. man. Hey, dude, you you a for effort, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, man. I ate that cookie I offered you. <laughs> uh, well, Ramsey, you uh, you are gonna be calling the the MLS Cup uh, final. Who do you if you had to pick? Who do you want hosting that game? I know. Let you me guess. You want to go home to LA? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. I, I do want to go home to L.A. I love being in L.A. I think that would be a, 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 an electric atmosphere if LAFC hosts it. But um, I, I think Seattle is a very dangerous game. Everybody's giving LAFC that final already. And I think I think Seattle can win tonight and knock out LAFC. And we would see a Seattle-Atlanta MLS Cup. Now, when people are watching this, this already happened. But... <laughs> right now it could still happen so that's certainly really exciting for the people who are watching this like oh my god it's happening again They're home and away leg um i think it's absolutely amazing and and what are you what are you looking forward as far as like when you call uh, a world uh, an mls cup match uh what do you look forward to do you do you like when there, there's a lot of history between the teams or do you like giving yourself a bit more space I, I like the excitement of it. You know, I've been fortunate enough to to, to to both Toronto finals against Seattle, the 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 Atlanta final, which was absolutely electric with that atmosphere. Um, you know, and and Portland doing their thing, super underdog. I think this year's a little different, man. I mean, if you get LAFC Atlanta, wonderful final. If you get Seattle, if you get Toronto, I mean, Toronto has a very good team as well. I think we have four very good clubs in the final four positions this time around. And I think any MLS cup that you're going to get is going to be extremely fun. It, you know, I think for, from a rating standpoint, it would probably, you know, the big bosses and network Swan, I think they want LAFC Atlanta, Atlanta looking to go for, for the, for the back-to-back you know, -back championship, but the Carlos Bella, Bob Bradley, Cinderella story to finalize in Listen, if they win the championship, you know, everybody wants to talk. And, and I kind of go like this because we need to wait. Is LAFC the best team ever in MLS? If they win the championship this year, then yes, they are the best uh, team in the history of Major League Soccer because of what they did during the regular season and because Carlos Velas probably and could still get to 40 goals in a campaign, including playoffs. That's crazy. Listen, Ramses, I know you're you're very busy. I want to thank you so much for uh, giving a chance to uh, speak with you. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate it very, very much. Uh, and yes, we'll see you at the MLS Cup final. So hopefully we'll get to shake hands and talk a little bit. We got more after this. Guys, a absolute pleasure.
Yeah, baby, we're back. What a great interview with Ramses, huh? Well, he's awesome. He's incredible. Yeah, I, I he's always such a pro. I show. Yeah, we're not used to that <laughs> nah. on this show. <laughs> no, I always love when we he got all the talent in the Kroger family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really cool when uh, Trump uh, created that video with him in it, the yeah. photograph video. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, what a weird connection. Uh, Every time he answered, I'm like, wow, this is how you remind me. <laughs> you're a professional. <laughs> what a weird detail about anyone we've ever interviewed. Also, huh? he's like, no, it's not true. Why would you put that in there? We'll put it on. The now we're on a question. That's the person we need to have on the show is exactly. who, who edited that. Who is this hero <laughs> ruining people's Wikipedia? Pages. Also got him, right? <laughs> they brought it up in an interview. But of all people to get, you know, Ramsey Sandoval apparently is a target, which yeah. is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, dude, wait till we get, next, get him next. Uh, no, but thank you again for, yeah. for joining us. And uh, I would, like I was saying, I always love talking to this. This I honestly feel there's few people in this country that are like these these gold mines for MLS and American soccer, like wisdom. Yeah, that also go back so far, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, he's one of them, man. They've been around the block, oh. the major league soccer block. We know about you, Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so I wanted to talk about um, another subject that was uh, recently in the news, especially about the women, U.S. Women's National Team. Oh, boy. We, we, it, it came up uh, during the, the introduction of the, of the new coach, but at which Carlo... Uh, Carlos Cordero had to field the question from a couple of the um, uh, the reporters, but the, there's been and he was like, "Women play the game." He's <laughs> <laughs> like, he didn't know what uh, weird what interview what press conference he was at. <laughs> uh, he th I think he thought, thought it was that who Megan Rapinoe is. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was uh you know a, a Al Bundy no ma'am meeting. Uh, oh, 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 topical oh. reference, <laughs> Blanco out here dating ourselves. That hey. you know, was a good show. I don't know what you're talking about. I heard my dad talking about it. <laughs> I didn't have one. All right. <laughs> That's how you know I'm lying. No, but uh, so there's been uh, new updates regarding the- Our friend Meg Linehan tweeted this out. Yes. Yeah, so the, 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 the homie, Meg the legal, Linehan. <laughs> there's been legal updates uh, yeah. regarding how uh, US uh, the U.S. Soccer Federation is trying to to handle this. Right. And a, a couple of the, the, the points that came up were that they, they, they're bringing- Well, I mean, uh, clearly they saw how bad the whole lobby thing turned out out for that sure, so they so they, so they were like well we don't want that bad press go anymore. to plan z yeah <laughs> <laughs> next one take over the world though that one's not gonna work all right we'll go to the next plan no but a couple of things that stood out meg and if you're not following meg linhan at it's meg linhan on twitter make sure uh you follow her for yeah. all these updates because it is becoming like this in weird soap opera uh because some of the points that they're trying to use as to why the u.s women are paid well or paid well enough is is that uh, they're, they're now they're asking for information on sponsorships. Exactly. It's like, hey, yo, you're making money some other yeah. places. Oh, but how much? Maybe we don't pay you enough, <laughs> but what do they pay you? <laughs> okay, Luna Bar seems to be taking care of everything. Yeah. I saw a lot of secret ads. <laughs> right? Y'all got a lot of. You're all over my TV. I don't know what you Also, talking. I want to smell your armpits. <laughs> Are you using it? Maybe it's a weird thing. I don't know. I'm just saying. Okay, I, I know. The, it's, this is all legal. <laughs> this, is legally, <laughs> this is for legally. the. Okay. This is exhibit A. Get over here and let me smell your armpits. <laughs> we're going to be filming it. <laughs> it's so crazy because we were just at the NWSL final and Carlos Cordero was right in front of us. He we walked just, past we us. We walked right past us. One day he's going to stop and be yeah. like, yo, what are you saying? Yeah. You got a guy who's been saying I want to smell people's <laughs> armpits? And I'll be like, it was Christian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. it's um. There, there's more and more. Like, to, people, to people who don't pay attention to. Um, the details of this stuff, like it all seems like, oh, the women are just asking for money and whatever. And, uh, and they also, he said, without the, the the document also says, without U.S. Soccer's agreement to pay the salaries of its marquee players, U.S. Soccer doubts the ability of the NWSL to pay them equivalent, if any, salaries, or indeed survive as a league at all. U.S. Soccer has been has been pleased to provide the support, however, as part of its mission to grow the sport of soccer, which is very much like a hey. <laughs> If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't even have a league, so it would be kind of bad if we walked away. Now, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a little bit of a, a power move uh, yeah. uh, from, from U.S. soccer. But some people are, are also suggesting that maybe if U.S. soccer was not involved in this way, where they were subsidizing the, the, the pay for some of the players, that maybe NWSL, NWSL can thrive on its own and figure out a way to, to survive. Uh, so I think that will happen. But
But yeah. I think in the meantime, if you don't want these American players to go to Europe or to go to other, you know, Latin America, other places where women's league are starting to pay a little more. Sure, sure. You know, the English league, the the we saw the, the Well, NWSL is still the best league in the world for for women. Yes, but doubt. but they don't always other leagues are willing to pay their superstars a bit more sometimes. Sure, sure. Like uh, the documentary we saw about I believe it was a Swedish team. Um Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. so uh, Rosen uh, kicking a screen. Yeah, 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 kicking a screen. So it's a it's a it's sort of a necessary thing I think especially if you want to have the drawing power of the women's national team players in the NWSL I do believe that that agreement still needs to be put in place that said it's like this none of whether sponsorships or not takes nothing away from how much you pay them <laughs> just if they you know if there's uh, uh it's not even to me it's just like how are we at this point yeah. because it just feels like really you don't got it you don't got the money. Right. Like, it's just like, what? what are we holding on to? Is it just simply we don't, it's not in the budget? Because that doesn't feel like a good enough answer. Also, change the budget. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got it. How what? much, if, if tickets for a men's national team game against Cuba are going for $200 <laughs> to see a massacre of my people, <laughs> okay, then you wow, got the money. Is that how you would describe it? Wow, is it in the history books of <laughs> yeah. Cuban history books? We know what you did at Cuba. <laughs> we were there. <laughs> All right. Right, we'll be back with more after this. Hi, I'm Meg Linehan. I'm a writer for The Athletic covering women's soccer, and I'm here kicking it with the Cooligans. Okay. Yes, we are back. All right, so uh, like we, we mentioned it uh, earlier this week, but we are going to Germany. Yeah, baby. And that is, uh, it's, it's pretty dope. So you know what I heard about Germany? Especially, specifically Frankfurt, which is one of the, the first city we're going to go to. Yeah. Uh, that you're not really allowed to be loud in public. <laughs> that you can get arrested for it. So wow. I have okay. a feeling another story is Okay, coming. we got, I guess, I hire a lawyer for Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Bubo, Bubo, get on it. <laughs> what's, what's the budget for bail in Europe? <laughs> can I get it in euros? <laughs> is that possible? No, so uh, we're, we're going to be going to just a, a little, uh, you know, itinerary for everybody. We're going to be going to Frankfurt. Uh, we're going to be watching a match between Bayern Munich and Eintracht Frankfurt. Oh, that's going to be a fun uh, one. And uh, we're also going to be participating in a in a media soccer game. I, well, you use the word we, okay? <laughs> and I wouldn't be necessarily <laughs> suggest that. Bring your cleats. Yeah, I got none of those. I'm bringing Timberlands. Right? <laughs> your boy's showing up in some jean shorts like just the OD Alexis. <laughs> like, go ahead, pass me the ball. Oh, you don't want to? Okay, well, then you don't have to. Uh, and then we're also going to be going to a match between Dusseldorf yeah. and Cologne. Oh, baby. So we're going to be seeing uh, Zach Steffen out there yeah. uh, in, in net and um, and obviously Alfonso Davies from uh, from uh, Bayern Munich. and uh, yeah, so It's, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be I tracked great. Frankfurt, which so, has uh, sent us some really nice things. Yeah, so right. guys, make sure you, if you tune in next week because uh, I don't know, I don't know if Alexis is going to be we here. We might not both be here, <laughs> right? Not. Okay, it's not my fault if I'm not. We may not both make it back. They, uh, <laughs> I think Alexis might end up on a no-fly list. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a so-fly list. <laughs> I <laughs> They see my swag. Wow. Don't boo. <laughs> wow, the cameraman is booing. I didn't know that. Did. Oh, this is a World Series game all of a sudden? <laughs> they allow that on television? Yeah. That was uh, uh, oh, cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there's going to be uh, a lot to look forward to. That's going to be a lot of fun. Also, uh, thanks to everyone who came out uh, to the NWSL event uh, we did the night before. That's right. We were what is up with NWSL? Why don't you have events before the the big game? Yes. there's You got a pregame, right? Even Sorara. And fraternities know you got to get a little <laughs> sauced before the actual event. Yeah, dude, you can't walk in all sober. <laughs> you got it. That, that's and that was like a, a weird, like I don't know, complaint that people were making. They were just like saying, "Well, we asked very innocently." Yeah, we asked Yael when she was here. We asked uh, Meg Linehan, and they were like, "No, there's no events." And we're like, "That's impossible. You just don't get invited. To <laughs> You're not cool." <laughs> and then it turns out neither are we. <laughs> there's right. no one there. There's there's, there's no, there were no planned events. But yo. 
tons of fans showed up. Players showed up. Equalized soccer. Thanks so much for helping put that together. Yes, uh, um, shout out to uh, uh, Jeff Kasouf. J- Jeff Kasouf. Uh, 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 li- yeah. uh, uh, what is it? Lori Lindsay. Lori Lindsay. I'm Lori Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay Lori for them. I'm like, yeah. what am I going to? Oh, <laughs> it's spreading. The virus is spreading. <laughs> she, he's making. Uh, uh, Becca Moros from the Utah Royals. Yeah, who uh, we were going to try to get on the show. Yeah, um, that was. Awesome. So, and everybody, yeah, there were people from Sky Blue FC. There were fans, fans of ours, fans of the game. People were so happy. They were like, yo, thanks so much for putting this together. There's never any events before NWSL. NWSL, hit us up. We'll do this again next year. That, yeah, this why was not? a blast. There should be, you know, parties. There should be events. All Star Games have parties. MLS has a bunch of events. And yeah. Like There's no reason why NWSL can't get on that. And they're nowhere near as fun as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. It's, it, it's, it's, it feels a little different, especially when, because all these people are supporting they're not they're not just supporting the, the two teams that are involved they're supporting the league right and, and they're I, they're throwing their support behind the league there were people there with seattle rain jerseys there yeah. were people there with sky blue fc jerseys thorns were thorns you were there with the thorns jersey that's right which said everybody which made people angry they were like why are you so biased this is why people in the media can't be trusted yeah and i'm like <laughs> i told you about them right? <laughs> uh, my, uh what's your last name for the tab uh, <laughs> but honestly there were so many people there that were just thankful that this was put together and equalized soccer did a great job of finding a location and, and taking care of everything we were just showing up and shaking some hands and kissing some babies there were no babies so we just shook a lot of hands we brought babies yeah i shook christian don't ask where we found yeah. them <laughs> <laughs> also did anyone take those babies because <laughs> we lost them all <laughs> we no. to get them to their rifle owner oh, oh no <laughs> we forgot about the babies <laughs> so again we, as we try to say nice this is what we do no, but, but uh, ho- just, uh, hopefully this is uh, uh the, uh you know the beginning of something that that becomes uh, consistent, you yeah. Know, as far as like planning big events, because uh, there were and they sell the, the the final sold out. Uh, a lot of people there, and I'm sure they probably would have wanted to do something. Yeah, really, really cool. Let's yeah. do something even bigger next year. Let's go. Call us. <laughs> What's your problem? Yo, put I put our number on the screen right yeah. now. Yeah, one eight hundred. Cool again. <laughs> Is that enough? I don't know if that's even <laughs> one <laughs> six Polanco. <laughs> we'll be right yeah. back. We're after this. Okay, thank you for tuning in again. What an what an, another incredible show! I mean, we we do it every week, baby. Uh, we just keep raising that bar. That's right. This is show number sixteen. Wow! I, I, wow, we've gone so well, far. I, I owe you money because I thought we were gonna get canceled by show four. That's so, right. This is we, impressive. We took, a, <laughs> a, a, took a big bet, and he owes me a lot of money. <laughs> That's right. Also, some physical favors. <laughs> so, uh, well, with that said, thank you uh, again, Ramsey Sandoval for joining us on this very unprofessional <laughs> show. Uh, you really <laughs> I just I upgrade uh, the very low, low bar that we set for ourselves. <laughs> but thank you because you are. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to <laughs> stay relevant in this business. Uh, <laughs> so again, thank you again, uh, everyone, thank for watching. So uh, we had a great time. Uh, we always appreciate it. <laughs> All viewers, listeners, uh, make sure uh, leave a review on iTunes if you yeah, listen to please. the podcast. We appreciate it. <laughs> He's Christian Blanco. <laughs> I'm Alexis Guerreros. Together, what are we? That- Cool again! <laughs>